Did anybody do libations? Or you did all that? Was the drumming? Somebody did drumming in the area, so that that's enough energy. Yeah. So now this is the new thing. Now um, this is the new thing, which is on one hand, this looks great. Like I told you, this looks great. I mean, you got. Anytime they got black people in, 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 in the newspaper in color with pharaonic outfit on, that looks great. But as you know, this is the famous Imam Esau that originated out of New York. It is now down in Eatonton, Georgia. But what worries me is, is this particular paper. This is Cox. Now, if anybody heard Alton Maddox talk about these were the same people that was instrumental in uh, instrumental in this whole uh, thing with um, Wayne Williams and the whole interferon thing, you know the whole deal on that. But Cox is also some of the people is instrumental in the brothers not being able to get any type of um, um, hearings or anything, you know. Uh, it was instrumental in actually savaging the brother to the point where as uh, in 1981 when this whole thing went down with the Atlanta child murders, this is one of the biggest racist newspapers in the country. Not only is it racist, this is not just a fly-by-night thing. This is like Ted Turner. Cox, uh, uh, the Atlanta Journal and um, Constitution is run by Cox, and Cox has what is now called Reicher Entertainment. You've probably seen it on several TV shows now, Reicher Entertainment. They do talk shows, they do movies, and they own 15 newspapers. So even though they've got Imam Esau up in here, and, it, and the title says Racial Legal Issues, Cloud Egypt, whatever the deal is, ultimately, you know that in actuality, in actuality, since the whole Farrakhan thing has died down, you know, and they really can't get nobody to turn an eyebrow, this is the new man that they're going to pick on as the fountain piece for, or the poster child for all whatever they want to throw on black people. Now the new thing is cult, and now the FBI has already labeled him as, as this main cult thing. So as a result, he's going to be the poster child that they're going to whip up on for one reason. As I said the other time, is the only reason why they was able to whip up on, uh, on Farrakhan back in the day was that Farrakhan never documented anything. See, even if you're not talking about anything, even if you're not talking about anything that has anything to do with scholarship, so sometimes it might just be straight channel. The spirit realm can give our people stuff just for us to actually give, and sometimes it doesn't necessarily mean it is scholarship. But even if you are not talking about things on scholarship, you should at least add a book list or something, uh, uh, mention some type of documentation and some white documentation for the simple dog on fact. The government has this code. In character assassination, they feel that in actuality, they can assassinate anybody's character. But just in case, if you put bibliography in your particular presentations, they don't want not only black people, but white people going and getting a book and going, mm, this means I can think for myself. So the key would happen with Farrakhan in the whole 1980s is Farrakhan never documented anything, so therefore they can use him and whip him all down. You see what I'm saying? So the other thing is, is Imam Esau is now has about... They have a, a group, and they sit around a table, and they take all the books, Zachariah Sitchin's books, Serious Mystery, and they take Zachariah Sitchin's and different books, and they plagiarize those books and make these big holy tablets and all that. And then they attribute all that to um, Imam Esau. So the people that follow think that Imam Esau came up with all this particular information. You see what I'm saying? And so, but the key is, it's just like there was a brother that was up in here, as a matter of fact, the brother that, that Bert is staying with was in the organization and said that in actuality, you know, with the Afrocentric thing back in 19, and you know when the Afrocentric thing was going late 80s, early 90s, he was basically Hebrew and Islamic. And there was a tape where he's attacking Dr. Ben. You know what I'm saying? and attacking Egypt, attacking Kemet, and attacking Dr. Ben. Now all of a sudden he's Egyptian. You see what I'm saying? But the brother, that was one of the brothers that was here, you, that, was, that, that had his hand in on writing the material. And basically they took Zachariah Sitchin's, well what happened was that somewhere in the late, in the mid-90s, they realized that 
Everybody had gotten on top of them based on people started dealing with metaphysical things. They had the timid background. You had your matrix on the street and you had a other group of people. So he said, well, listen, I got to go to the next phase in order to survive. And literally he took the entire Earth Chronicles of Zachariah Sitchin, Earth Chronicles, and turned it around and put certain words, you know, just change some of the words so they don't get sued. And basically that was the basis of his new introduction into the metaphysics is he used all seven vol volumes of um, Zachariah Sitchin's Earth Chronicles. You see what I'm saying? Uh, and, and the whole nine yards. But, but basically if you look at the books, and now my point is, is this. My point is, is this, and now we got a dog on at this particular time with consciousness being old point something with the masses of people, we also must be fair on this. We must be fair to the point where as, would you rather them dealing with him with a little bit of Kemet flair or dealing with Creflo Dollar? Right. I believe that I would rather them deal with him than Creflo Dollar because, why you say that? Because there's a certain amount of people that are gonna follow people, period. That means if it's not Imam Esau, it's gonna be Creflo Dollar, Reverend Ike, or somebody. That's just the way it is. You got people that just don't follow people. So you know it's almost like water seeps its own level and the theory of relativity is, is that in actuality he is relevant when it comes to pulling up that track. You see what I'm saying? Now on the other hand he's had a history as far as he has had some legitimate things in some of the materials in the earlier stuff had a lot of good stuff in it. So my point is, is you got we at this particular time we gunning for souls so we can't just really say that nobody shouldn't have nothing because our people, man, are so messed up now until in actuality, this becomes positive in the way that it doesn't mean that you, it's a part of you because you're supposed to be the trained one. But my point is, on the other hand, dealing with this, so on one hand, he's relevant. On the other hand, uh, on the other hand, this is their new campaign. They don't put a color picture of no black man in no damn paper. You see what I'm saying? And start courting him over a year. They're setting it up that it damn near might be the next Jim Jones incident. You just, because you, I'm telling you, you, you just can't trust this devil when they come out and they interview you and they got you in the paper with, the, with uh, a posing like Osiris. You understand what I'm saying? Uh, you know, it, it, we understand too much about the secret society to understand that this one's some bullshit on that level. So, uh, Another thing is, is um, in, you know, remember now we said the last time, always look for things that happen in the summer solstice. Now also in the summer solstice of this year, we got Chris Rock on Vanity Fair magazine in clown face. Now also Chris Rock, you know, he did this thing, uh, bring, the, uh, bring the pain or whatever this thing was, and he talked shit about Negroes on there. Now we laugh because most of the stuff he was saying about black people was true. And if it was in a comedy club with all black people, it might have been funny. But then again, on the other hand, when you got a, 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 a white audience, and number one, we got to realize that TV is not local TV anymore. Everything is satellite TV, so that means they can get it in China the same night. So therefore, if you see a doggone Jew come and talk shit about Jewish people on, on, on nationwide TV, so this is the, this is the, this is the new thing. Now we got to address this particular issue also because you're going to have to be aware of this too. And um, I know this is kind of taboo for a lot of black people because we just now started calling ourselves Africans. And we, we need to have any kind of solidarity we can with any of our brothers and sisters from, not, from all over. But we got to understand a government conspiracy when we know a government conspiracy. And the new government conspiracy is that black people are too much aware of their their, their uh, Arab counterparts as far as the people that run the stores as well as the Korean people that run the stores so now the new Korean is not African we must tell the damn truth on this shit and what I'm trying to say is it doesn't have anything to do with you or doggone looking down on Africans or we trying to have some type of solidarity well because we're trying to have some type of solidarity but we got to call a spade a spade and the key is is because in actuality they train them based on in the homeland to look down on us as being doggone somewhat savage, the government is now becoming to, is starting to use this where now in order to get your doggone green card, they got to show films on how savage we are. And as a black people, you know, this whole propaganda thing. So as a result, I've seen it going on in New York and now it's in Atlanta as far as the cabs 
as far as the pocketbook, as far as a lot of your merchants is now becoming the Africans. And although we think this is actual positive, this is a government conspiracy now for the simple fact that they're trying to pit them against the little brothers and sisters from America now, as you know, uh, from the, in, the, in the hells of North America. And what I'm trying to say is, is you got to look at the game. We're not trying to endorse you telling you to turn your back against the Africans, but we're saying, on the other hand, agents can come in all colors now, and this is the new doggone conspiracy with these Africans, and this is a serious shit, because it's happening in Atlanta also, too. And now we're known as the monkeys. Serious shit? We got to deal with it the way it is, you know what I'm saying? We're talking about consciousness now, so we're, this is not the type of meeting that we would go to the masses of people out in the community and say this, but for conscious people, we got to understand we are battling a worldwide conspiracy also. And we're not talking about all Africans, but we're talking about there's a group of them and it's, and it's somewhat on the same land, same type of African boule, basically. We got Negro boule, now they got a new elite African boule to always to be a counter person whenever we rise up there's always some counter people they will, if they want to have a, a, a voice to counter any black positive movement they're going to use those particular people so you just, that, that's one thing to be careful about at this particular time also another thing is this and this is very key they're now giving this thing called the epidural a epidural is where they stick a damn needle in your spine when you're pregnant. Now the key is this. Number one, they get DNA tissue from the spine. That DNA tissue, number one, is good for cloning the mother as well as this new type of science whereas is this. They have the technology now to go in the spine. Now look at this, this is some science. They can go in the spine with the needle, stick the fetus Get the doggone DNA tissue from the fetus. They don't need but one drop of blood. Take that particular fetus and grow another fetus, grow another doggone fetus right in the womb. Put another fetus right in the womb. Kill the other fetus. And the baby is born alive, but the baby doesn't have a soul. Because anything cloned is a step down. It has everything, memory, everything you want to name it. You can even have past life glimpses, but it doesn't have the soul. That's the difference. So this is a new thing with this particular information that we got to realize that this doggone, they say in the last days this man is going to, knowledge is going to increase. Now they have already isolated every gene in the body. This is some serious shit. This means in actuality we are talking about, we are talking about them actually advance beyond Yakub. You see what I'm saying? This is, this is the type of information that we're talking about. So now they actually can clone individuals in the doggone bodies where these babies are born soulless. And they're doing it through this whole epidural process. So anybody sticking you in the goddamn spine with a big long needle, we got to be crazy when black people been having babies for damn near 10 billion years. And all of a sudden, but see, they can do this for dead people because our people love the hospital. Now, we, we got to deal with some mundane things at that particular time because it's very serious. Now, I got an aunt. Yep. It's epidural. I don't ask, you know, I'm the last nigga to ask how to spell something. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? E P I D U R A L. E P I D U R A L. Now this is the new. This is another thing. Um, like I said, for those particular people, the the horror in the hospital is a reality. But now they they, they got the jump on us, and the jump is they can they can report any type of thing, and you can get it, but it's not coming through means of normal scholarship. Now they can take all of the random doctor's experiments and they put them in the horror section called medical horror under the guy that wrote the, the uh, 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 Michael Palmer, the guy that wrote the, the, the movie Extreme Measures. So it's under medical horror. This is not fiction. It is a true account of what's, of what's happening, but this is the government way to cloak shit. This means if you started hollering out saying, well, you know, we seeing all this shit you're doing in the doggone hospitals, they go, wait a minute, hold on. This is, that's horror, that's fiction. 
And this is the way that they can actually quote things. Now, a lot of stuff you're going to learn about a lot of things that's coming out in a movie next Friday called Act Pupil. Act Pupil. The other movie that came out this summer was Disturbing Behavior. So uh, I usually say in, in other states, I go, well, you all ain't going to see it in the movie, so you shit out of luck until it come on video. But then again, since I'm in New York, that's, that's no problem. So therefore, you go to your nearest bootlegger and get disturbing behavior. Well, they're actually one day the child is a brother with dreadlocks or, or, or some white punk rocker. The next day he got combed down hair and a letterman's jacket looking like, like the 1960s Potsy or Beaver the Cleaver. And overnight, they go and implant them in the brain. But it was interesting in the movie, every time that they would, uh, they would have an over sex drive, as Dawood mentioned in the Metaphysical Masters meeting back in 94, every time they would have an over uh, uh, when they would have a, uh, uh, an advanced sex drive or a heightened sex drive, they, they would, it would go haywire because the pineal gland would kick in. And, and it, would go, it, it would make the implant go haywire. And they literally said overstimulation of the pineal gland, these children are going crazy. So anyway, the movie Disturbing Behavior. The other movie is APT, it was APT, yeah. Pupil. We need to go analyze this particular movie. Uh, yes, yeah, so that's, who, that's who wrote it. Uh, dealing with the whole Hitler thing. As well as go and rent, go and do, on November the 10th, you can get a good copy of Small Soldiers, where these white soldiers are killing this ancient black people, but they got them as monsters. But the, but the leader has dreadlocks, and he's black, and he has lion whiskers, represents the Sphinx, or the goddess Sekhmet, or the Lion of Judah. So, uh, uh, and you will see how one people's role is to kill this particular group called the Gorgon, these ancient black people. And you're going to get thrown off because you're going to see monsters. And you don't understand the science. The other part is these white soldiers, their main thing, their main objective is to kill these particular ancient peaceful loving, peaceful loving people. But the other people are humble. But it shows how this person, if he's pushed too far against the wall, he will fight. Talking about the black man and black woman. Those uh, um, toy soldiers have a chip in them too. They have a chip in them and that particular chip when they took it out it was black and gold. Which is the essence of... It, it, exactly, which is the essence of alchemy or what you call melanin, the black and gold one. So it's very uh, key that you, that you go see that particular part. Also go back and rent the movie Zorro, the new one because it's the Star Wars trilogy rewritten which they even mentioned Stolen Legacy when the student is ready the actual teacher will appear and said you are in the outside periphery but as you get uh, as you grow in knowledge the circle gets smaller very key that they're, they're doing this at this particular time um, that we actually have to understand um, um, different things that's actually going on even the movie Death Becomes Her Death Becomes Her the movie came out in 1992 with um, Bruce Willis and uh, Meryl Streep and Goldie Hawn. Death Becomes Her and, and, and the Isabella Rossellini where they give them this portion for doggone potion for aging. That's nothing but melanin. Which now they're dealing with what is called growth hormones. So now the growth hormones are just a new name for pure melanin. The other melatonin is just basically it's crushed pineal glands which we now have the actual paper because as I said the other day when I was here I went to speak in Indianapolis and one of the brothers, Lily Pharmaceutical, is the, is, is the home base for Lily Pharmaceutical is Indianapolis, Indiana. Which means in actuality, um, and Lily Pharmaceutical is one of the biggest um, um, companies, uh, pharmaceutical companies in America. So we have this particular document, I've Xeroxed some also, where they actually show you on the actual pine, the, uh, the, the earlier melatonin bottles before they became mass marketed, that it's made from concentration pineal tissue. So we actually have that actual document. Now the other thing is, is this new thing now where they're doing pure melatonin that costs $800 a bio, which is called growth hormone. Growth hormone. And this particular part, they got these white, rich white people going and taking this growth hormone and it's, and it's reducing the aging, which if you go see the movie Death Becomes Her, you will actually see this. It's reducing the aging, and also they're seeing that they're remembering better, they're having vivid memories, and all of that particular stuff. 
but, but it's but instead of saying it's pure melanin they're saying go hormone because they go and say that as you get older the pituitary gland, gland secretes a hormone that is vital for growth but when you uh, get 18 to 19 it still secretes the hormone because you're supposed to grow in consciousness or thought but most people in America stopped dealing with any type of study and not necessarily academia we don't analyze shit anymore so therefore this particular part shuts down including black people just the black people you can turn it back on and how you turn it just like when you know you you go to fly up and you say I want to tone up and you go pump out and, and start working out well with black people you can turn it back on based on using mental aptitude skills basically by doing a little studying by doing a just a little bit of awareness videos or anything where you are analyzing shit other than the normal everyday life so it can cut back on with white people it doesn't but what we're seeing also with black people and this is why you're actually seeing black people in consciousness that all of a sudden you see them on the street cut four or five years after them being some of the most conscious brothers and they dumb down you don't know what the hell is going on well there's a gland and if you don't use that gland the pituitary gland stops emitting the growth hormone but basically it's another form of melanin but with black people it can cut on with white people they got to go and get black people and kill black people to get this particular information this stuff from so the movie death becomes her is dealing with that as well as the movie strange days which you was thinking it was this virtual virtual reality trip that they was dealing with with putting this headset on that was actually dealing with melanin because they get another person's memories and they trip off another person's memories uh we're just doing a recap uh, and all, but but that particular growth hormone is the new shit that they're dealing with now, which is eight hundred dollars a vial. So we're talking about pure melanin that's under a uh, doctor's uh, actually have to be in the a doctor's care to actually uh, administer this thing. It's very key, a um, uh, uh, very key. Now, um, as you know, that these particular people are very scared. Anytime Richard Hoagland and all the particular uh, people started going over to Africa to meet, you know, an art bell going to dog on South Africa and that whole nine yards. Now, let's deal with one thing on that. First of all, everybody knew that art bell was government from the get-go. Now, from the get-go. So two things that might happen with this. One thing might happen is that um, for rating purposes, they let a person know just how much you miss something when you don't have it. So all of a sudden, they might come back with this particular part. Uh, the, uh, this particular part um, and this is something on the mysterious quit and what did you read what it say what, what was it ba basically talking about well you were saying that um, someone he didn't ever say who was but they are out to get him and uh, he had mentioned this before last thing last year that the people had contacted him so but you know what though you know I think that's some bullshit I'm going to tell you why <laughs> you know why because First of all, they won't even let your motherfucking ass get on the damn radio. Not unless you got a part of it and go that long. It's one thing to sneak a little peek where you get on there. You know what I'm saying? It might say some things. But to be on the radio like that, no, in order to be on their airwaves, you got to be doggone a part of their whole system in the first place. And I'm going to tell you what the deal is. The deal is, is this. The deal is that is the same as the same, same shit with BET Talk which it is not the, the information that they're giving none of that information is old shit any damn way the technology is 20 30 40 years old but what they do is that they give you some shit but they, they are more interested in the callers so when you call in they can monitor on how conscious america is and based on how conscious america is the notes on whether they pull out the goddamn barbed wire or not which they're going to show in the movie siege because now they are into, they give you doggone on uh, the movie with an uh, Ebola outbreak two, and, and, and two weeks later, boom, Ebola breaks out in Africa. They give you wag the dog, showing her and hot Monica Lewis to end the goddamn movie. Movie made a year later, a month later after the movie is released, three weeks later the damn shit happened. So they're giving us the movie Denzel Washington Siege and the whole thing. So they are into doing this particular part. So my point is, is um. My point is, 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 is with this whole Art Bell thing, um, he was a monitoring system anyway. They have to know how conscious America is because this is one great experiment 
country. They're now calling it the American experiment, the American experiment. So they want to know how conscious people are based on your phone calls. You see what I'm saying? So the first thing like DET talk, they might give a controversial subject. They say, we want to see how many people out here are conscious. And they know that half the people are going to come in talking about Martin Luther King bullshit, that Jesus bullshit, yeah. and all that kind of shit. But they know a few people are going to come in and going to be aware. And going to say, well, this is what's really going down conscious-wise. But then on the other hand, he says, so-and-so from Georgia, you're on the air. Right there, he done gave your name and your goddamn telephone number and all that shit. <laughs> so right there, the, the motherfucker with the white coats or black coats come knocking on your door and kill everybody in the house. So it's a monitoring system to see how conscious people are. And they can monitor where America is and where America is dumb. Well, 98% of the time America still is dumb, but they're still talking about that old point something. You see, so therefore, this whole thing, we have to see what really actually happened. Then again, on the other hand, might be some new shit that's coming out. And he might have just been the primer. You see, he might have just been the primer, but either way we talk about it, they are actually very scared. Very scared at this particular time. Um, like I said now, also the new book, uh, um, Everything is Under Control, Robert Anton Wilson. Now Robert Anton Wilson, although he's de he, dealt, he was the main person that dealt with a lot of this Illuminati stuff in the 70s before the whole Bill K Cooper and all them old niggas got on there and the Christians took it up. But he even said on his internet that I might even be a government agent inadvertently. Now how would, why would you even say some shit like that? Not unless you are a goddamn agent. I wouldn't even want to, even if I'm doing it, even if I know it, if I'm sneaking over to the white man at night, I wouldn't want you to know. He goes on his internet site and say, I might be an agent inadvertently. Well, motherfucker, you had a lot of years to find out about that shit. You've been out here before anybody else. But the key is, his particular book, the new one that's out, Everything is Under Control, is the real deal book. Because, you know, all the rest of this is all that Christian shit. You know what I'm saying? That they're trying to destroy Christianity and all that. Well, that might be a damn blessing. In his new book, he's basically, because Robert Anton Wilson is... Because he is an OTO member and has been an OTO member since they overthrew Kenneth Grant in 1977 and overthrew him, whereas Kenneth Grant was the head of the OTO. But Kenneth Grant was doing a lot of exploratory work and also Kenneth Grant uh, tell you that one of his chief people is Gerald Massey. Well, that's the normal right there because Gerald Massey straight up tell you the shit is all black. So then, so the OTO sent out two or three hundred damn memberships of giving two or three hundred people in the, in the organization saying that they are the head of the OTO now, and, and Robert Anton Wilson is one of these people. But his new book is dealing with the AWAS thing, it's dealing with Rahel Rukahula, it's dealing with Cthulhu, um, the Necronomicon is dealing with Nova Drew Ali, as I read with you, as well as it's dealing with the British, the, 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 the Moorish origin of Celtic history and also the Moorish origin of Irish history all in his particular book everything is under the control so that is the one if you're going to get one to get other than that same old bullshit you see what I'm saying about you know the great seal and a couple of things like this and the dollar bill and all that old shit that Bill Cooper bullshit so that's the one that actually will get actually getting all because um, um, is the one that's actually dealing with that particular information um, so Few other things we need to deal with at this particular time. A lot of people did not like the actual X File movie because they figured it didn't have enough action. Because they already know a nigga, that's what he gonna go to the damn movie to see. Whether the shit got a lot of action and all. But the key is that you had to notice the actual dialogue. They said we have a black substance that was here before the dinosaurs. That's us. That is now here again that will replace man using man as the host. That is nothing but your own fucking soul. The black melanin soul. You see what I'm saying? So the dialogue in there was very superior. But if they put the actual action low, and everybody, oh, I didn't like it because they didn't do nothing. I didn't get it. But you didn't listen to the actual dialogue in the actual movie. This is very key. Um, very key. As I said, the movie Call the Conqueror, which is written by Robert E. Howard, which is in actuality... Um, uh, Robert E. Howard is a guy that's written Conan. Uh, this particular movie, when you go to see the movie, you're going to see the woman Tia Carrera as the evil one. 
She's actually, the evil in that, which we're going to get into in a few minutes, is actually the pure energy. Then the other slave girl is the actual nice one. She ends up getting the prize. You know, always got to get somebody to have the prize, which is the Holy Grail. This is two aspects of the same feminine energy. Now get out of the pit point that they're right. You know they gonna make, they ain't going to make no movie with you and this shit doing this stuff. But you got to understand the essence. But they did, when they put Tia Carrera, which is damn near a, a, a Hawaiian or Filipino or something, that's showing you the original black element. You see, so it's very key that you understand this particular movie called The Conqueror. Um, called The Conqueror, which is now on video also. Now, um, we know also that all of this particular stuff that went down with the Clinton shit is based on the summer solstice. That's where it started. We know that Clinton came up and said, I'm sorry that I, um, I did fuck this girl or I did, she did stick the cigar off my ass or whatever. But he admitted to the shit on 7, on 8, 17. Anybody know any Salima magic? Know that there's 718 is also a number that also is the number of the stellar, of, of the actual stellar, uh, of, of the stellar of Ankhok Nakonsu. And the stellar means the word stone. And any time you hear that word stone, you are talking about philosopher stone and you are talking about melanin and the whole aspect of alchemy. But it's also called desolation abomination, which is also in the Bible. It has something to do with Leviathan also, or, 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 or this other guy, Behumat. Very key. So therefore, he admitted to this on 817, which is 718. Very key. Uh, you know, uh, when they do things, summer solstice, Fall solstice, everything, spring equinox, fall equinox. The whole thing, he bombed a few days later, Africa. You see what I'm saying? Hell, Africa got bombed during the summer solstice. All of this is very key that you actually understand this particular part, um, what's going on, because this whole drama that's being played out is all the government fake shit. None of it is real. All of it is to get your mind and occupy your mind from actually tapping into a certain amount of energy because they know if the mind is being occupied and you can't think, then therefore the energy that you are supposed to have is on the periphery. Then, uh, uh, as we are calling in a few minutes, the Leviathan energy also on another level in a few minutes. But it was interesting that they're occupying the minds, like I said, that we met two girls from England and they said over in America, we watch over in England, Jerry Springer comes on four times a day. But as you know, like I said last week, Jerry Springer's the only show, not only does eight niggas act like fools, that ain't nothing to do, get a nigga to act like a fool, but white people act like fools. So to them, this is a whole American experiment to say, we're going to shut the whole damn thing down like the movie Dark City. Shut it down. Very key that you understand this is an experiment to find the actual soul. You see what I'm saying? To find the actual soul. So this is a very key. Also dealing with the actual Clone Wars. If you get the actual, the uh, Star Wars, but if you get the actual, um, the book, the what is the annotated screenplays? The book, the annotated screenplays. And if you write down the timeline in which he, he, in which he built, when, when he wrote each one, he wrote Star Wars in 1973, they made it 76, came out 77. He started Empire Strikes Back 19, uh, 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 November 28, 1977. He started Empire Strikes Back, uh, he started writing it in 1981. If you understand this, this is pivotal times when they went about with this particular so-called Clone Wars, which in actuality, the only motherfuckers might be in the United States is the motherfuckers in this room, as well as a few other people, period. So we're not just talking about, see this whole thing now, we're not just even talking about black people. We're saying that the United States is so expendable until they got a whole European race that's not mixed blood. So therefore, this whole amalgamated United States, these crackers is also considered niggas too, if you're looking at the actual Illuminati. Which means that there's a few elite families that they feel would get out of this shit alive. We understand that this is not going to work. We understand that we are the damn people and we got this shit under control because it don't take but two or three people to do this and we understand the crack are going to die. But then again, on the, other stand, on, the, on the other hand, we un must understand that if this man fought his people like dogs in Europe 
that he don't take too kindly with Jews and, 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 and Swedish and France and all those people coming over here and screwing each other and making doggone babies outside of his own racial line. They got a, a serious shit on not no kind of blood contamination. So you can't be no Jerry Seinfeld fucking all kind of damn other types of white women from France, from England. This is some serious shit with this cracker. He don't play that when it comes to his upper echelon. His bloodline has to be cure, pure. So based on his experiment, America is all bad blood. Period. This is, so this, this, when you say, what about this? In saying this about how he feels about his own people, tells a little bit on how he really feels about you. If he can literally take all of America. So what they're basically saying, look, we, uh, we, based on the alchemical process of Freemasonry, which they got from the Moors called cleaning the Aegean stable, that basically we had to make Europe a pure people with no admixture of Moorish and African and Arabic and Italian bloodlines that have something other than Anglo-Saxon or Nordic type crackers. So therefore we made America to filter out all the criminals, because that's what they did, all the criminals in Europe to put them over here and therefore they can actually clean out Europe. And the last vestiges of cleaning out Europe was the so-called ethnic Albanians as well as that Irish shit that's going on with the IRA thing. You understand what I mean? So you got to understand the way this cracker is dealing with this thing. So when the girl came over and she said that they're watching Jerry Springer and they're watching these dogs on other shows over here where the, where the white people are going to war to get, you know, and Judge Judy and all that shit, the actual English is saying, hey, those people there are in trouble. Get rid of all of them. And this is the way that the Illuminati takes care of his ultimate prize, the ancient black man in America, which was prophesied to be the messianic dog on Holy Grail. They know this. They know that the Holy Grail of what they're talking about, the, Holy, the bloodline of the Holy Grail, or this whole call, whole, this messianic family that's supposed to come through the whole Grail line, they know that that was introduced to them by Celtic Moorish science. So therefore, that bloodline, which they also recognize that will be in America, they know they're talking about nothing but the Africa in the diaspora that we talk about in the movie Jason and the Argonauts, which is taking the ship of all the most talented people to a land far away, as well as the movie Highlander. Highlander 1, where we're supposed to have the gathering in a land far away in America. So they understand this particular part at this particular time. Now. Let's deal with a couple of things that we want to deal with right now before we uh, um, want to deal with a couple of things right now based on this uh, Leviathan energy. And um, to document this, you need to get the book Damionic Reality. Because as we said, and I mentioned the last time, and it's interesting because you got your brother here now, uh, 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 and, and which is a very special weekend for the simple fact that um, the introduction of uh, Brother Karanja, which is, um, which is uh, a brother on the scene that is doing some good work. This is his first time coming out, which is very good. That we enter. So it's a very special weekend. Anytime we can get a, a, a brother, you understand what I'm saying? Somebody new coming up through the ranks and actually tapping into this particular thing. Basically, somebody else on the damn frequency. You see what I'm saying? Because we only got a few soldiers on the actual frequency, period. And like they say, to find a real black motherfucker, you're going to have to go to a goddamn museum. In fact, so now, the key is, um, this particular Damien, this particular Damien, this particular Damien comes from the ancient word, Amien, or Amen, or Amen, which just means hidden. And if you notice, if, if you notice, what's that, D-D-E-N, hidden, this particular Damien just means hidden. Even the word omen, they don't do things, or uh, M-O-N, or M-E-N, omen is omen, and it means hidden. They got a movie that's hidden, and this is one of the main key things in what they're dealing with in their particular movies. And what we're dealing with based on the alchemical treatment 
is we are dealing with the black person or the soul actually called in unifology the shadow now the other day I told you that evil is good in the context of where you put it now in the context of alchemy I want to get this particular book this is interesting this is a book called you on evil so you're going to give you a whole lot of psychological things on why, why people do this and why people kill and all this type of thing. But if you actually check his particular, um, the context and look at the particular, uh, the particular uh, uh, chapter, he has this word, the shadow and the fight of the shadow. The, the, the fight with the shadow. Now, we're not just talking about psychology because he basically what Jung did is Jung literally purchased a Gnostic text when they dug up the Nag Hammadi library in 1945. Jung and his, his particular institute went over and they had enough money to purchase one of the particular texts called the Seven Sermons of the Dead. There's a whole book put out by Princeton University called Gnostic Jung. So therefore, he was able to surpass Sigmund Freud because he was dealing with the African shit. Now on the other hand, dealing with this particular, the fight with the actual shadow, we're not just even talking about, even in psychology, when you go in psychology, and they say if you're ever going to get better, you're going to have to face your demons. Or get on top of your demons. This was the role in, even in Star Wars when they told him to go in the cave. Luke Skywalker, go in that cave. So Yoda told him, he said, what? He said, what's in there? He said, only what you take with you. Which the cave is actually his true self. Now, this is the interesting point is, why is this connected with evil? Now, we're not talking about psychology here. This is a little bit different what we're talking about here. We're talking about a form of, an up, uh, of the ultimate weapon in the last days. This particular evil is divine it's not the type of evil that you manifest physically by physically going out to kill anybody because by doing the physical act that is actually giving credit to the physical and therefore you are actually doing the opposite this is talking about a train of thought that the book of law says compassion is a vice for kings so what we're talking about is an alchemical process of getting to your pure energy or the pure essence of your energy as we know the government understands that he's killed this over the years by giving you fundamentalistic religion and making you so-called quote-unquote good and why is it every time we quote-unquote turn good shit fall, fall apart and not all that the most of the so-called people is so-called good you don't like no more including the newfound conscious motherfuckers. Oh, peace and love, brothers and sisters. And you saying, man, I don't even like these motherfuckers, man. You know what I'm saying? You know what I mean? And it's the same shit. It's not just the, it's not so, so the good shit is not just subject to don't go to church anymore. It's the newfound motherfuckers in the conscious community now. Oh, brothers and sisters, oh, it's a blessed day. Greetings. Oh, fuck all that old dumb shit. <laughs> My goddamn coins hurt, and I don't want to hear no bullshit about no greetings and no peace and love and no beautiful goddamn day. They say face your demons, and we're talking about the true essence on the way this particular part is. Now, what are we talking about here? You, J U N G, on evil, on evil. Uh, by Mary Steen. What's that? S T E I N. Stein. Mary or Murray Stein. M U R R A Y Stein. Now, what are we talking about here? We're talking about the kind of energy, the kind of evil that's pure energy. And what we're talking about is this. Now, you have to take this off of the moralistic and humanistic side of shit. Because we have to stop thinking like humans. 
based on history, we were advanced rulers of the universe. And we later on became human as a hibernation stage before the metamorphosis. But now we are going to metamorphosize, but we are still now trying to be human, which is the cocoon stage. So what is the other stage? The other stage is this evil monster that they are showing in all the monster movies is your ass. So what is the ultimate hieroglyph for the evil monster? It would be that based on the alchemical term that we're talking about as far as the mythology. It would be something like the movie Alien. Take no prisoners. You see what I'm saying? Now we understand based on the Egyptians or the Camites, the ultimate symbol for chaos was not the lion. The lion is the archetype of the divine transformation. So they said a lot, well, the lion was the most greatest animal, the strongest animal in the animal kingdom. That's bullshit. You, like I told you last week, you walk up on the lion, based on him not being hungry, you might be able to get away. You walk, if you swim with a shark, if he don't see no blood, you might be able to get away. You might be able to play with him. But a crocodile, there is no compromise. So the divine emblem of Sebek was the crocodile because a, co a crocodile, the only motherfucker in the animal kingdom, there is no compromise. Same way with the movie Alien. Now where did they get it from? Alien comes from H. Geiger's Necronomicon, which was he was inspired by the cult and, and by the occult and also H.P. Lovecraft. The guy Ripley Scott flew over to Europe saw these magnificent Necronomicon paintings and later on drafted his Alien movie. So Alien is the ultimate archetype of who we are. That is the Alien because even in the Gnostic text, the Gnostic text they talk about the Alien God represented in your book, um, um, Bittany Layton's book, the Gnostic Scriptures, on the Alien God. So we're talking about here another system. Now what are we talking about alchemical? And this is what we're talking about. We're talking about this. We're talking about the word prime. Evil. How you get this word prime evil? That means that evil, or as you say, equals, was in the beginning. That's all it is. I don't give a damn what. Religion, whatever. We're talking about chaos. And if we're talking about chaos, we're talking about carbon. If we're talking about carbon, we're talking about melanin. Now, in the cycle of what we're talking about here on pure evil, I like that shit. I'm pure evil. That shit even sound good now. If you get out of the damn bullshit old moralism, that's to keep a person down. That's the political shit that ain't but 2,000 years old. And understand pure evil. The ancient African or the ancient Atlantean or the ancient Egyptian understood formulas. That's what Crowley was talking about. That's what Austin Spear was telling Crowley because even Crowley didn't get it. Crowley fired Austin Spear because he said, damn, you too weird. <laughs> Crowley said, hey man, if you're looking at any goddamn deity to be up under, you ain't getting it. These are mere tools to use. And, and these are white people talking, which is the lesser entity. He said, these are mere tools to use as formulas to get results. And when those results stop happening, throw that bitch into the trash can. So what we're talking about here is pure evil as formulas. That's what the cracker don't let you understand. How is it that he, everything he's giving you is so-called good? Now, ain't no way in the hell the cracker going to come and be the, the epitome of the enemy we know. And yet, his enemy is going to be my goddamn enemy. It ain't happening that way. So what are we talking about here? We're talking about here, this. We're talking about this prime energy bottled into a pit or a circle. Now as we know that anything that you put in something encased, the older it gets, the more stronger it gets, till it eventually it is even stronger than the thing that bottled it. So we're talking about the mother energy that was bottled, the primal energy, which is the mother and mother energy. Tiamat, the chaos goddess, Apep, who raw 
overthrew. This particular energy, after so many millions and billions and billions of years of being bottled, it becomes stronger than the thing that bottled it. So we're talking about being even against God. Oh, now you ain't gone too goddamn far. See, you, you, cause you, we are Afrocentric, we are conscious, but we're still Judeo-Christian in the mind. That's a slave religion. Spawn is supposed to tear down the gates of heaven. Oh no, no, my Bible says, your goddamn Bible tells you that heaven and hell will pass away. It tells you that in the Bible. It says that heaven and hell will pass away. That's one thing, you, you can talk all the shit you want. Now, if you take King James Version as a chronology and use it, it's a fucked up book. But if you take King James Version as a dissecting dictionary, if all the shit is up in there. It, I, if you go to the King James Version, I guarantee you every shit I'm saying, if you know where to find it, it's in there. In there they say heaven and hell will pass away. They say a new heaven and a new hell. So my point is, if this heaven is going to pass away, what the fuck I'm trying to get to heaven for? <laughs> that shit is leaving too. <laughs> what is the revelation? One of them. Twenty-second chapter of Revelation. Now, the key is. What was bottled in the beginning? The fallen angels were bottled and trapped in the beginning. That's why when you go to ancient Kemet or you go to ancient Greece, which is nothing but that all gone Cretan. If you can see, there's some new shit now. The ancient, the, the Iliad and Odyssey in the ancient stuff is coming from, we know, Phoenicia, but also Crete, which is Babylonia, Mesopotamia, which is still all black. But ain't, even if we deal with ancient Kemet, it is a mentor that rises up. You get it? That means that the Christ energy is not coming from heaven. It fell and was here in the beginning. You see what I'm saying? That's, it, it, it was here in the beginning. So we should be trying to look to hell. Because if you goddamn a thousand miles away up in the sky, then hell is on earth if you're looking down. But... The seed is in a mentor. The seed is bottled in the core. Jung talks about a God called Kor. That's no more than, than Osiris or any underground deity that will give, or uh, Osir, that will give birth to the cosmic seed. Why is it Kor? It's like this. The heaven realm did its act. See, anytime you do something, you put forth something, You've already done it. That's an act that's already done. So the heaven realm created the physical realm. End of story. Now anybody knows in order to create a new, you must destroy that what you created to build a new building. That means that the heaven realm, which is the lowest aspect of the creation that becomes the destructive force, is the only thing that can create some shit. The satanic realm. If you understand energy, if, if, you, if, 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 if you take anything in regeneration process, the word set or soot is also the word shut in Mesopotamia and you get the word shit. That's where the word comes from. Shit is the ancient word for the word soot or set or soot. And it means shit which means excrement. It is the excrement that all moralistic religion has turned against and, and is talking shit against. It is the excrement that gives you the divine spark. That's a turd of shit right there. <laughs> within, within the turd of shit, no, I don't need that because if a motherfucker shit, you know, make you make that smooth. Because we talking to a little bit of vegetarians up in here, so we make that a little smooth turd, you know. Now, if anybody know 
that the, it is the excrement that has the divine regenerative fertilizing seed to grow something new. Not your ass. <laughs> not the intestinal tract. Not the body. Because the body is degenerating. You see what I'm coming from? It is only the excrement. Now in the heaven realm, the physical body or what we call the physical realm is the excrement realm. The fallen realm. So it is the leftover fragments of the burnt up ashes of heaven. That's what we are. Because we fell down. We are the Nephilim. So therefore the only thing that can create is us. Not God up there. That is something that already happened. You understand where I'm coming from? So therefore the actual Leviathan energy that the white boy is scared of and in Trouble Ravenscroft's book the spear of destiny. He said, we must prepare for this Leviathan's energy. Leviathan is a dragon that's in the water. Anytime you get the word sea, you get the word water. It's also talking about the deep wave of the subconscious. The ocean, the sea, the cavern, the cave. And they say this particular Leviathan is up under the water. We, they say her head, once the head is broken of Leviathan, it's a metaphysical thing. When you break a head, you break a seal. And when you break a seal, you unleash a certain amount of energy. So on one hand, they talk about the Christ smoting the heads of Leviathan in the Bible. On another part of the Bible, they tell you that it is the... the they, they say that God's going to open these damn seals up, in so many words. Then they talk about they're breaking some heads again. What this is actually talking about in alchemy is a breaking of the actual seeds or it's also talking about that satanic realm or the excrement of creation now becoming the divine spark. So the Christ which rode into Jerusalem on an ass, that particular ass which is set, the golden ass, in actuality is the actual excrement which later on becomes the ray of light because there can only be light born out of the damn darkness. In the beginning there was darkness. Then there was creation. Well, the creation, they say they brought order to chaos or light to chaos. Well, then to get, if you're going to create a new motherfucking heaven and earth like all ancient, ancient scriptures, that means it's got to be some more chaos to create that. Well, we know that that particular chaos is in the melanin. Richard King told you that. And... Your boy Stephen Hawkins, who is the astrophysicist, says, they say, well, the universe has no ending. That's what the white man said. Stephen Hawkins says it does have an ending. They say, well, where is the end? He said, it's, a, it's a, uh, the smallest point of a point of a point of a point. That smallest point of a point of a point of a point is in you. That's your soul. That's the true you. That micro soul of what they call the dwarf energy. Now ending this thing up. Okay, now ending this thing up. This, this breaking through the science on what this shit is really talking about is this. A woman called in on the show, on this radio show, and asked one of these guys, this scientist. She says, is there anything on earth? She said, how did she say this? Is there anything on earth that is not alien that is alien to the earth and he said well that's going to be kind of hard to say because they said we can find every composite in space we can also find in earth so they said everything that's out in space which is basically carbon we can find in earth they said the only thing that we know of that is alien to not only Earth and the universe is this. So first of all, the Bible says we're going to have a new heaven and a new Earth. A new heaven and a new Earth. The only thing that they say is alien to both the Earth and the universe, and which is basically the alien God, is some stuff that is in dwarf stars, which is burnt out stars, that is packed so tight till it produces a white powder or a white seed that if that particular white seed was to ever become manifested either in the universe or on earth the whole particular earth would explode 
Now, based on alchemy and based on what the white boy knows, that dwarf white substance that they say that's theory. They can't go to a damn bird off star and find this shit. But the only theory that they know where this stuff actually is is inside of the melanin. That white stone which is invisible. They say in the white it, it, it's so, it's, it's, so it's invisible in us. But in a dwarf star which is probably as big as the earth it would be this white substance. This is based on their calculation. But in us, it's an invisible seed that escapes even when we die. They don't even get that. All the melanin, they can't get this little seed. That's the soul. But one atom of this, the entire earth will explode. And that, my friend, is the true Christ. That's the true Christos that they're talking about. This white stone or this white seed. But it, of this particular white seed, but it can only be produced in something that is burnt out. So the excrement is something that was used up, it burnt out. And from the burning out, it made a new seed. And from that, after it's matured, it will illuminate. You get it? Yeah. That seed, and that, my friend, is the Christ. So, the only thing down here that is old enough to have that seed in it is black people older than the goddamn dinosaurs older than everything else even older than nature because we created nature they even got the new Gnostic scriptures dug up in 1945 when they talk about this Eve person or this feminine energy taking her uh, uh, taking her essence and creating everything you see they even talk about ISIS creating everything. So we understand that this particular seed. So now this also gives another question. The Christ couldn't have come 2,000 years ago. Otherwise, he's just another nigga like us. Because if he was the manifestation of this seed, then we wouldn't be here to even be talking about the Christ right now because it would have been over. And what we're, what we're saying is the whole Revelation text with the seals, the abyss, the dragons and all that is an alchemical cooking pot talking about a thermal nuclear energy. A subatomic energy. And that's, that's the soul. But the, but the shit is, that can be in any goddamn nigga bumming for quarters around a gas station. And that is the damn enigma to life. So, now to, 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 to wind this thing up, what they are scared of at this particular time is the dreaded Nostradamus prophecy, the dreaded everything at this particular time because basically everything is manifested. But then again, that's the way the spiritual shit is. It, make, it, 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 it manifests in a time when we even give up on Negroes. Who like, man, hell, shit. And, it's, and it manifests in a time now that it's scary. I don't know about New York, but down south, white people treat you better than black people all day. That's just some scary shit. Oh, hi! No, motherfucker, I don't want you to be nice to me. No, no, they won't. No, but my point is, we understand, ultimate, collectively, they are the devil. We don't stray from that. You don't get that out of me. My point is, they do treat you better than most niggas and shit. I walked down the street in damn New York, and all the black people trying to run over your ass, they ain't stopping up a damn. Y'all know what the hell I'm talking about. My point is, it is the spirit to, to, to even make the white boy to the point where as he gets secure that it ain't coming out of us when it does. He said, oh, we got them niggas. We done killed them all up. We did everything to them and they ain't produced no Christ. And when they merely think it is over and they get their guards down, that's when it's up. But there are those that is in the higher order that understand that, hey man, even though they didn't produce, we got to do this anyway just in case. So therefore, for the mere fact that we see them getting rid of their commander in chief, you understand what I'm saying? For basically no reason at all, no reason that no other president has done, you understand what I'm saying? Let you know in actuality they have to do this particular part and call it a quote unquote crisis because there's something greater actually happening at this particular time. There's something greater actually happening. So, 
So what we're dealing with now, we're really at this particular time, we can say as conscious people, based on the course of the last year, that man, we are actually literally seeing the manifestation on what is to come. We are right in the thick of this particular part. You see, on what's going, because I'm telling you, anytime an honorable mom and say, when self accuses self, that's when you know the end will be. But we understand that the house has been burning down. In actuality, like the guy Emil Bach said in, in, in his book, Revelation Out of Kemet, a revelation of uh, Apocalypse of St. John, the revelation would go on for 10 years and the people would have been in it 10 damn years and wouldn't even know it. Because they would have grown used to bad news. But my point is, they are running scared and I know some shit is happening and even Bill Lilly said it. He told me yesterday, he said, something is damn strange, man. When we walking down the street yesterday, downtown Brooklyn and all over Manhattan, and we hardly seeing nobody. Shit all shut down. Now, I don't give a damn how many laws Giuliani passed. There got to be some kind of experimentation. When I walk around, I walk five blocks in Brooklyn in July in the damn heat at 12 o'clock at night on a goddamn Thursday night, and I can't find no niggas out in July. <laughs> It was a Thursday night. What kind of shit is that? I go to Atlanta, 6 o'clock, all black people off the street in the inner city. The inner city is looking like fucking damn Oregon. You see what I'm saying? So we're talking about some experimentation that's actually going on when we see this type of thing actually happening. And this cracker knows this anytime goddamn 42nd Street turned to Disney. That couldn't have happened 10 years ago. You see, in order to turn it into Disney, that means you got to get rid of the motherfucking people on 47th Street because Disney would be tainted just by all the people that hang out that particular way. So at this particular time, we're going to, um, we're going to, um, um, turn the, uh, Show me love. whole thing over to, Show me love. Valentine.